What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Astro Finesse. It's your boy Lil Finesse the Jiggy Hippie back with another video for y'all. And this video right here, we're gonna be talking about if you have Neptune in the seventh house. And now pause for the cause. If you don't know how to find your Neptune placement, if you're a new subscriber, if you're just starting off your journey of self-love, self-knowledge, self-understanding, if you don't realize why it's so important that you have to look at yourself through astrology, study yourself through astrology, and overall love yourself through astrology and numerology, don't worry, I got you. There's a couple of videos. I'll put the link in the description. You have to watch them first to become hip to the knowledge of what I'm about to talk about right now. So if you look through your birth chart or your natal chart, it's the same thing. And you realize you have Neptune in the seventh house. This video is for you. So without further ado, let's just get it popping, shall we? Now you already know before I start, I'm going to give y'all a list of some celebrities so y'all can visually see what Neptune in the seventh house people look like and act like in reality. So to start, we got Amy Winehouse, Mariah Carey, Jeff Bezos, Adele, LeBron James, Halle Berry, Chris Rock, Nick Cannon, Kaylani and Richard Pryor. All right, so boom, Neptune in the seventh house. First of all, what does Neptune mean? What does Neptune represent in our birth chart? So the planet Neptune rules Pisces. When you think about Neptune, think about Pisces energy, which is spiritual, intuitive, more in a fantasy, delusion and illusion because it's kind of hard to re realize what's going on. It rules the fifth dimension, so it's kind of hard to really understand in reality what's going on what's going on so it's spiritual so in our birth chart looking at what house neptune is in kind of gives you an idea where you kind of where you can have like an illusional naive delusional kind of outlook on whatever area of life that is it kind of clouds it it kind of fogs it up but also where you can have a more spiritual sense a more spiritual connection to whatever house placement is in in that birth chart so now we're in the seventh house ruled by ruled by libra represents our partnerships marriages business associates business partnerships it represents the energy that we are attracted to and also what we attract by subconsciously um by subconsciously portraying out or projecting out an energy so we if we attract an energy by subconsciously projecting out that energy in that seventh house and in that seventh house so what does it mean having neptune in the seventh house neptune the planet of deception illusion spirituality fantasy in the house of our partnerships and marriages and of the energy we're projecting out to get a partner or whatever whatever we are whatever we are attracted to now straight off the bat we already know because neptune rules deception because neptune kind of makes it foggy and cloudy and hard to really understand what's going on when it comes to your partnerships and it's not only in relationships or romantic type partnerships but it's but, it, but it's with partnerships when you're dealing with people on an everyday basis when it comes to just partnerships in general you if you have displacement you have to understand that neptune kind of makes it hard to really see that person for who they are in the reality because a lot of times with displacement y'all could look at people and kind of want a spiritual connection first or kind of look at them through the spiritual lens first or rose colored rose colored glasses first and it's rose colored glasses because in reality spills the spiritual sense or the spiritual energy of someone can be clouded up by a fake persona of that person in reality. So a lot of times, instead of looking at that person or analyzing that person of who they are in reality, the spiritual energy that y'all seek out, the spiritual connection that y'all seek out, a lot of times people look for the perfect soulmate, the perfect, like, you know, that spiritual connection kind of thing. It's like y'all seek out that first before knowing who that person is in reality. And now contrary to the fifth house, which is about casual flings and having fun and like the beginning stages of relationships, the seventh house is the serious part. It's when y'all signing contracts to become married, when you're committing to someone. So when it comes to displacement, I'm going to start off by saying when it comes to committing to someone or looking for someone to become a, become your marriage partner or even business partners, things that are serious when you're signing contracts or when you're putting like all your resources and energy and love into someone as in a commitment kind of thing. Understand that displacement, Neptune makes it hard to really know what who, who that person is in a in a real sense if you're less if you're a less um evolved person if you're a less evolved neptune seventh house person 
You can look at someone and always want that spiritual connection before you know who they are in reality. So with displacement, like I said, these are the people that will seek out, always seeking out the soulmates, always seeking out those like, you know, those spiritual type connections always. And there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely soulmates and twin flames are real. There are people in this reality that come into our life that either show us who we are, make us change who we are, or actually elevate who we are. There's actually special people in this reality that do that for us. So all that is real. But with this placement, understand that you have to really have more of a discernment type of energy. Like you have to really understand that, all right, so in my lifetime with my chart having this placement, I could kind of look at someone and really idealize them, idealize them too much or be more of a fantasy type person or kind of like look at them from not who they are in reality too much. So before I commit to them, before I marry that person, before I sign a contract with that business partner, before I actually do the serious business with this person, I need to understand, I have to have discernment, I have to vet that person out properly, I have to know who I'm dealing with, I have to first of all know myself and know that if I myself is moving in delusion and illusion, if I myself is not really knowing who I am or knowing what I want, I will attract the person that is moving in that same energy, that is moving in that same, um, un, that's moving in that same delusion type energy, that's not really working out for you in that, in that, in that aspect in life. So understand that. The seventh house is what, what we subconsciously project out to attract our partner. So you're going to subconsciously be projecting out the Neptunian energy, and you're going to be attracted to the people that are people that are of the Neptunian energy, people that are of like you know artists, spiritualists, people that kind of move in life in a more spiritual or not reality type way. You could low key be attracted to someone that you could really take care of. Like you could always want to save someone as in someone's like always in and out of jail or someone is always like needs help, needs help paying their bills or someone just needs help living in reality. You could be the person that, all right, so I want to save that person. I want to help that person. And doing that, you'll realize you're giving yourself a lot to the wrong people. Even people around you be like, yo, you shouldn't deal with that person. He does this, she does that. That person is this, that person is that. It's like you can kind of look past the reality of who that person is, like what they do, their past. Like look past that vetting process and be like, nah, that person is my soulmate. Nah, we met like this. This is beautiful. This is spiritual. Nah, I, I still want that person. Nah, we're going to be together forever. It's like y'all could really be head in the clouds, head in the spiritual realm, head and not in reality, head in fantasy when it comes to dealing with someone in your partnership, commitment, and relationships and marriages. You can also be attracted to people that are unavailable because remember, when somebody's unavailable and you're attracted to that person and they're showing you that either they're not ready for a commitment, either they have a partner already, or either not interested in you, if you're still attracted to that person, that leaves you always fantasizing about that person. Like, damn, even, that, even though that person's unavailable, I still want that person. I'm going to fantasize about that person. It's like, y'all yeah, have that kind of daydreamy type energy when it comes to that partner or that relationship and that energy. So understand that aspect with this, with this placement that you don't chase after people that are unavailable. You don't chase after people that are in reality, not on their P's and Q's, that is not on their square, that is not really living, that is not centered within themselves because you will, you will want to be that savior and all that. But even as soon as that person gets on their feet, low key, you can low key have a an insecurity, an, an insecurity that that person's gonna leave you, or you might not feel as as special when that person gets back on their feet, or when that person actually is like actually on the same level as you. It's like y'all could always subconsciously want somebody that's lower than you, so you can help them bring them up or help heal that person, or you could be the person that is always needing to be helped, needing to be saved, always living life like what was me, kind of having that victim mentality kind of thing, and always wanting someone to help you and lift you up and save you. So understand that. Neptune here is all about the spiritual realm, but it's empathic. It has no boundaries. It's selfless. So remember, the seventh house is Libra energy. Libra is the scales. So in general, Libra energy in general, and a lot of people don't even realize this until it's too late. Libra energy in general, at first, is real nice. It's real graceful. Will give themselves to use all that. And then when Libra energy realizes that the scales are not balanced, that it's not reciprocated, then a dark side comes out and they flip real quick and everybody's like, yo, where'd that come from? Yo, what happened? So Libra energy in general needs balance and needs to be scaled and needs to be reciprocal. But having Neptune here, that meter or that bullshit meter of you knowing if you're giving yourself too much, if it's balanced, if it's reciprocal, it's kind of clouded, it's kind of diluted. So you could be giving yourself too much to someone and be like, 
even though that person's not giving me what I want right now, maybe one day they'll change or maybe they're going through this right now. It's like, instead of having that meter of like, nah, I'm gonna cut that person off or nah, I'm not gonna do it or nah, I'm not gonna be in this relationship because it's not reciprocal, it's not balanced. It's like Neptune will kind of make you have the spiritual or a fantasy type energy of that person and not really stop yourself from giving yourself too much. Remember, Neptune is selfless. So with displacement, it's very important that you have to set boundaries for yourself with displacement. When you bring people into your life, like I said, this is the commitment part. This is the marriage. This is the signing contracts. This is serious. This is when you're giving yourself resources, energy, when you're giving, when you're being like, when you're being committed. There's nothing more serious than a commitment. So before you actually committing to, committing to someone, before you seeking out that spiritual connection, which I say we all should actually seek out a spiritual connection within people. Before you do that, though, vet that person now in reality. Vet that person now or their past who they are right now but before you even think about marriages and commitments and all that you yourself have to be internally straight you yourself have to be internally a1 your spirit your spirit has to be a1 your 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 soul has to be pure you have to be healed from the past like if you're not if you're moving in this reality not healed from the past and having like traumatic past traumatic trauma still stuck in you and all that like i said the seventh house is the subconscious energy energy you project out to retract your partner so you would subconsciously be attracting someone that is also not healed and y'all have that trauma bond and all that. Like this is like the karmic house when it comes to relationships because if you yourself is not ready to be in commitments and all that, do not get in commitments because you will be attracting someone that also has that energy subconsciously. And because Neptune makes it hard to understand what's going on, Neptune makes it clouded and diluted, you won't realize it until it's too late. And when you already made the commitment already, and when it ends, that's even more pain than the fifth house that goes into casual fling because you, you actually signed papers, you actually committed, you actually did all the extra the extra effort into, trying, into looking at that person as that's your number one person. So like I said, before you even get in the dating room, before you think about commitments, make sure you have healed yourself first. And if you have healed yourself first, and if you have done the spiritual work, the inner work, with displacement, you can most definitely find your soulmate with displacement. You can most definitely find that partner that has a, that you have a spiritual connection with. Neptune here will grant you that 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 love that y'all love that that y'all need and crave after you have healed yourself and done your work. And one example of one of the celebrities that I could I could think of right now is like LeBron James. I believe that him and his wife have been together since he was in high school, kind of thing. Like you see how like. They're low key. That's like a soulmate type relationship kind of thing. Like they, the way they they do their the way they do their relationship, have their family. It's like y'all can actually generate that soulmate relationship that y'all crave. But you have to first be internally straight. First be spiritually straight because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna subconsciously project out that wrong energy and attract the wrong partner into your lifetime. Seventh house energy is a commitment. Is a serious business. Do not. Sign contracts with people, do not be in, in business relationships with people without really sitting back or even asking someone that's more mature than you their intake, their opinion. Because understand that you're not looking at them through reality, you're looking at them through the spiritual lens, through the esoteric lens, through the fifth dimensional lens, through the fantasy type lens. If you're not of the more mature or the more evolved person with displacement, so it's okay to ask somebody that's more mature than you, it's okay to have someone else's opinion if someone's telling you if more than one person is telling you yo that person is not good for you yo, yo that person does this that person is not um that person is not straight that person is like just telling you about some somebody when that when somebody when people are telling you about someone you're dealing with like more than one person keeps telling you keeps telling you and you're like nah that's my soulmate nah i love that person understand that that's like signs the universe is giving you signs like yo like understand that you're not really using the sermon right now and if you don't listen the heartbreak will be atrocious will be terrible because you committed to that person you actually signed the papers you actually gave yourself full heartedly to that person so with this placement be really careful about the people you are around because like i said it's not just dating and relationships it's partnerships and relationships with people in general so be careful about the people you're around because you might attract people that are delusional and lying to you and deceptive and all that but all in all, if you work and live in life in a pure intention, if you worked on yourself spiritually, internally, if you actually have a pure heart and you actually know that you're actually, you're actually healed, most importantly, you have to heal yourself from the past because we all have a past. We all been through something. Everybody has to heal themselves. But if you actually healed yourself and you're ready to go out there, you will subconsciously project out healed energy and you will attract someone that's also healed and you will have that soulmate type connection that you need and crave in this reality. 
y'all in my video on Neptune in the seventh house. I hope y'all enjoyed that. My next video is going to be on Neptune in the eighth house, and you already know I'm about to go in. If you have subscribed to my channel, appreciate all y'all for real. For real, you already know the love is crazy, it's overwhelming, low key, but I'm grateful and I'm humbled. You already know. But if you still haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, handle it on time for your boy. Don't forget to drink your water, mind your business, and be safe out here. It's your boy, Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie. I'm going to see all y'all when I see y'all.